In this video we want to take a look at modules. This topic has been suggested by The Puzzle Maker 2 in the episode on either. Um, if you, the viewer, wants to uh, have some topic discussed, please feel free to leave it in the comments. I'd love to take a look at it. Okay, but for now we are talking about modules, a very nice way of putting functionality into modules. Um, so we, we are sort of modularizing, uh, if that is even a word, uh, the functionality that we provide with the functions that we write within Haskell. Okay, so we want to take a look at importing and defining. So importing is the, well, not so hard one. So we will take a look at uh, that right now. So we already know how to import modules. We did it before with the import keyword. In this case, we would import some module called module. Now, it is also uh, possible to have this import list. In this case, we are only importing the names name1 and name2. Because, think about it, what we are importing is not really functionality or functions. This is not done at runtime, this is done at compile time. So what we are importing is names into the scope of the module we are talking about where we do the import. Right? So what we're doing here is we say, well, there may be some other names within the module, uh, but we only want to import name one and name two. Okay, the inverse is also possible with the hiding keyword, meaning that we want to import everything but the names name one and name two. Then there is the qualified keyword. The qualified keyword um, forces the user to put the name of the module in front of the name imported from that module. That is very helpful when you have multiple modules that use the same name. Uh, that's where you can use qualified in order to differentiate between the two. And then you can also rename modules with the as keyword. Now, it's also very important, and I haven't shown this on the slides, but it is important that everything you've seen so far can be combined in ways into one huge, very complicated import statement. Right. We also have to take a look at how to import data types. So let's assume that the data type called data type with the constructors ABC is within that module. And what we want to do is to import that data type. Then you can do it like this, where you use the name of the data type, and then you have this strange list behind it with the two dots. Now, what do they mean? Well, they are the list of constructors we want to import. So in this case, we only want to import the A constructor. Why is this helpful? Well, maybe this type has a constructor that one of our own types has. Now, this would, of course, clash. Uh, the, the names of the constructors would clash, and maybe we do not want that. So that's how we could theoretically hide it. Yet, if you have uh, conflicting names in constructors, you should avoid them anyways. But, okay, that's just a side note. By using the two dots, by the way, you import all the constructors. So that would be the typical way of importing a data type. But it's also possible to maybe, in this case, import A and C, but not B, for whatever reason. Maybe that makes some sense, maybe not. Uh, that is, of course, dependent on the use case. Okay, so now we've talked about importing. By the way, it is, also, uh, it, it is also possible to import modules that have been imported in other modules. I haven't shown this, and you can take a look at that in the documentation if you want, um, because I just think that's such a sort of fringe use case that I didn't really want to highlight it here, because probably you will never do it. Um, but it is possible, so you can look that up if you're interested. But now we want to answer the question, how do we make and especially organize our own modules? Let's make an observation that um, the modules that we know so far are, for example, called data dot or system dot. So data dot list, data dot char, um, data dot map, system dot io. Why, why is that prefix in front of the name? Well, the prefix should tell you a bit about 
what the modules are about. So modules within this data prefix um, have something to do with the data type and modules within the system prefix have something to do with the system functionality. How that name comes about, we will talk about it in a second, but that's just an observation we should make, and that is a sort of tip to you if you want to define modules uh, to properly organize them by the type of functionality that you want to provide. Okay, so one uh, very important rule is there is only one module per file. Other uh, languages like OCaml um, allow to have multiple modules in one file. That is not what's happening in Haskell. Here, a strict rule is applied, one module per file. The module name equals the file name, of course, without the .hs. So the file name without the .hs is the module name. And module names always start with a capital letter. So your file names should also start with a capital letter. Okay, so let's look at an example where we have a root directory uh, for our project, which contains main.hs, which is our main Haskell file, and foo.hs. Now, you could do it like this, where we want to import foo into main. So, of course, we have the import foo in main.hs, and the module definition uh, w looks like this, module foo where... And then you have, you know, some definition. So that's where you would start the normal definitions like we've seen um, before, you know, the stuff you would uh, type into GHCI or some other file. Okay, so that's very easy, right? Well, let's take a look at that prefix. So when you put a module into a directory, in this case, a directory like bar, this name of the directory is the prefix of the module name. So of course in main.hs we have to change foo to bar.foo, but the important thing is that you also have to change this in the foo file itself. The foo uh, or like the name that you have to give to this module is always relative to the root of uh, your main file, the file that in the end you will compile. Now, we will not take a look at compilation in this video, but probably in the next video. So that's important to note. Okay, so now the question is, is there anything we have to look out for or are there any special rules when defining modules? Well, there is basically only one and that is called uh, the export list. The export list works just like the import list that we had uh, when importing only a few names. You can create a module where you right out of the gate say that only the names name1 and name2 should be exported. So if now you have you know some helper function called this is my cool auxiliary function or something like that, then it is not automatically exported when the uh, module is imported somewhere else. And that's about it. Modules, and that is something I want to highlight, are a thing that happens at compile time, not at runtime uh, or any other time. So modules are not first-class variables. They are really just a collection of names. You can look at them as a namespace that you can either import or not. You can either import certain symbols, or in this case, names from them, or not. But they are not a object that is created or passed along at, at runtime. This is all done at compile time. And after the compiler is finished linking everything, then modules have no meaning anymore in the Haskell runtime.